Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this. Me having a hamster on my pocket, on my pocket, on my shoulder. I had originally tried to put her into my pocket, but she really did not want to go into my pocket at all. You know, I put her in head first, and so she was like dangling with her head in my pocket and her feet on my on my shirt and was just like backing up and just did not want to go in. So this is Gojira. She's been wandering around in her cage and I just wanted to show her off before she went to bed. They look like fat little blobs, but it's just their skin. They're very sleek animals inside. They're not fat, but they're just big and they're awesome. I love hamsters. So I'm gonna put her away. Here we go. Yay. Thumbs up for that. I love those little guys. I just, I don't know why, but it's it's a good thing. And of course, Amelia is in. She keeps jumping in and out of the window, of course. Some days she'll stay in most of the day. And then some days it's she just jumps in and then she's gone. She may be back on my lap for a while. Who knows? It's hard to say. I did not go walkies last night, and while I feel guilty about it, I also don't feel guilty about it. Because, as long as you go every other day, you're okay, and I had gone the night before, and so that's good. Now, the reason that I didn't go walkies is different. I'm... I like playing video games. I've been playing video games since 1982. 82? 84. Well, home video games since 1984 when I bought a VIC-20 and then a Commodore 64 and then later years went on to an Amiga and then on to the IBM PC market stuff. So I've been playing home stuff since 1984 and before that I was pumping quarters into the arcades playing Space Invaders and scrambling all this stuff way back when. So I've been playing video games most of my life, just not until I was like 14-ish or so when they started putting their arcades out. And then of course we had an Atari and a Pong system before that. So I've been playing video games for a long time, so now I'm not jaded, but I've been playing video games for a long time. People want me to play horror games for some of my Let's Plays, especially since it's October, and this ties in. But the thing is, I'm not, again, not jaded, but I've seen a lot. There's been a lot of stuff going on, and what's happening right now in video games on the major markets is this severe dampening down of innovation and just genre homogenization because nobody wants to take a chance lowest common denominator gets the money. And so there's just the generic ho ho homogenization of everything, where if you play one shooter, you can pretty much play another shooter, even from another company, because it's all the same formula. Now, the horror games that you can find, because I've been watching horror even longer, it still takes a lot to get to me with horror again not jaded just but because the visceral ha 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 here's a dead thing in your face and it's gross sort of jump is I've been watching that since I was old enough to watch TV I like the things that get in your head and work on your emotions and make you feel dread and despair and and loneliness and such like that that don't just play with your head ha ha here's something gross jump but oh oh how would i oh no that would be terrible being trapped in just this box knowing that outside is an a foreign atmosphere or any atmosphere at all like you're on a space station knowing that if anything goes wrong while you're trying to deal with this and there's a hole that comes in the side 
you're doomed. All these little things that'll get into your head that way. That's why I can't play a lot of horror games. That, I mean, I can, but I laugh at them. They're not horror to me. They're funny. The jump scares, the very blatant and often super clumsy jump scares. You have to have immersion to make the stuff work. And it's hard to get me immersed because I can see so many of the tropes and the steps and the beats and such. Now there's a site, Keymailer, where if you do Let's Plays or you stream and such, you can request keys for various games and that the devs like your channel, like you, think their game is a good fit for you, you can request games and they may give you a key or they may just say, hey, here's a key. So if you're on the site, you'll be offered keys, you request keys. One of the keys that I, I asked for was something called Moons of Madness. So I just, I had it for a couple days and I just, last yesterday, I said, oh, what the heck, I'm gonna try this one out. I played it for the next six hours, nonstop. And I was creeped out and horrified and just, it got in my head. Now there is a lot of immersion breaking stuff. I mean, at points, <clears throat> things are just janky enough where you have to run from bad guys. Now they do present the game in such a way, it's almost a walking simulator type game, but it has threats and dangers and puzzles and you have to run from this thing. But as long as you're making any effort to get away, you're going to get away because it's part of the game. You know, it's survival. But there's a couple points where they have these, it's, they're like hallucinations, but not, they're like these animated, but rotting astronaut suits. There doesn't appear to be anyone in them except shadowy forms, but when you get up close, you can't see anyone actually in them. They appear to be empty. If you get close to them, they will grab you. And then you have to wait through the animation of them pulling you in after lifting you up. And then it looks like they're trying to bite you or something, but it's a mat, it's a helmet. And then they throw you to the ground. And after you're on the ground, after that animation stops, if you're close to them, they go into the, oh, I've got you animation again, because you're close, you're within their animation range. So you have to run past them within grabbing range to get past them, the only way through. But if you're close enough, they'll grab you. And that includes after they grab you the first time. So if you get close enough, that's it. They grab you, throw you down instantly as soon as that animation is done grab you throw you down and then if you're still alive grab you throw you down and it's it's just annoying it's immersion breaking it's very very bad but aside from a few spots like that because it uses a checkpoint system so you might have to redo a couple minutes of work after this stupid thing that happens that isn't your fault but you can make your way through it it employs a couple things. It has a stupid dream sequence thing. But that's good because they keep referencing the dream sequence. Most of the time when you get a dream sequence, something starts with a dream, they go, oh, that was a dream. And then they rarely talk about it again, if ever. It's just, oh, that was just to get you in the mood, or that was just to set the story, or that was just the framework, that was the... No, this is, they keep coming back to it. He keeps talking about it. He keeps getting freaked out about it. So that part was good. And then they have a huge tutorial section where you're just running errands, just running errands all the way through this complex on Mars. And it's boring and it's dull 
and it takes way too long. But I can see why they're doing it. They're teaching you the systems of the game and they're showing you what it's like to live on this place on Mars. Because you have to suit up and leave and go out periodically. But then you start to discover that some of the things that you saw in your dream, you're seeing uh, in real life. And you're starting to have things that seem to be dreams, but maybe are or maybe aren't. And then of course, stuff starts happening that is directly out of your dreams. And oh boy, things fall to hell quite quickly. So it's, I played for hours and hours and I was horrified and scared and fascinated and just fixated. That, that is what I'm looking for in a game. Another game that I had gotten a key for, it's like Stygian something something something. It's a Lovecraft based RPG, but it's one of those, it's it's a point and click, you move around and you talk to people and it's presented hand drawn so everything's flat, but it's a 3D space you're moving around in on the flat drawing type things. And you know, it's janky, it looks weird, but that's the atmosphere. The point behind HP Lovecraft's fiction and the monsters and all that is that things are unknowable. We don't know. And if we try to learn and know what's going on with these things, our minds aren't set up to deal with it. We lose our minds because we're not set up for that. And the world, the universe, everything is just hostile. And the fact that we're still alive right now is mostly a miracle because the big nasty things out there haven't really noticed us yet. It is a horrific sort of worldview. And the game makes it very, oh, the old ones have done this to, to at least this part of humanity. And they're doing this to people to do this. And you've got to figure out what's happening with, that wouldn't happen. Even the old ones, if they were, there's a lot of things with old ones, but in the Cthulhu mythos, one of the old ones was a star-firing race and all that. And if they did know about us, they wouldn't care enough about us to use us as anything more than simple, you know, possible food or slave labor. But they've got better slave labor. So if we were just an annoyance, they wouldn't play with us. They'd just kill us. And so they put all this RPG and figure stuff out things in the game. And it's like, that's, that's directly the opposite of what all this stuff is supposed to be. So I played it for 20 minutes, half hour. Haven't gone back to it. Just the atmosphere and the feeling of not really, I mean, it's not that they're not respecting the lore. I mean, the, the Cthulhu mythos type stuff, it's always open to interpretation. You can always add your own thoughts onto it. People have been adding to it for decades. Most of it's in the public domain, the H.P. Lovecraft stuff. The other things that have been added onto, like writings by Clark Ash Ashton Smith and such like that, those are all copyrighted still and you'll get in trouble. And most of the stuff that we associate with Cthulhu mythos stuff is from these later people. So the big names and the big things like that that people think of are usually copyrighted by other people than Lovecraft who invited other people to write in his universe. So yay on that. So as a real quick one, I doubt I'm gonna have any sort of great intro to the video today I have online therapy and it's only online of course again because I don't have the gas to drive out to see my counselor so we do it online via his software so thumbs up for that I've got that happening at nine o'clock it is 705 right now and I've got just about enough time to say I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people for having left me a comment hopefully once again it was just one page another page and then whoops already ran out of comments so hopefully there's 20 to 25 people that i can thank for having left me a comment
If I mispronounce a username, no disrespect is intended. I get lost, even though I count in American Sign Language. So if I do so, my sincere apologies. And I'm not reading the comments right now, except possibly through my very, very good peripheral vision. But I'm not intending to. I'm just thanking you for having left a comment. Later on, I'm going to read the comments. Thumbs up each one I do. Answer as many as I can. For right now, I'm just thanking you for having left me a good, bad, or indifferent comment. Thank you very much. Let me call my Chrome. And we have been baby lisa thumbs up and thank you blaze 9029 how about that mike lester <laughs> confused owl 29 greatly appreciated denial thumbs up and thank you brian a greatly appreciated Gabriel, thumbs up and thank you very very much and then we have overlord 9k greatly appreciated sebastian ferris thumbs up and thank you russian timing Thank you very, very much, and have a great day. Chill Dude, thumbs up and thank you. And Tall Dude, one, two, three. Always good to see you in the comments. Blur's World, thumbs up and thank you. X American X Panda, how about that? And thank you very much. East Isle Nagar, greatly appreciated. Colin Reisenauer, thumbs up and thank you. And good to know the whole story. I watched your video about your, your new now issues. And then we have Maximilian with X's in the middle, three X's and capitalized middle one. Underscore Hiranix, underscore, thumbs up and thank you. Rule Empire, greatly appreciated. Frankie Split, thumbs up and thank you. Malker, M-A-L-C-U-R, thumbs up and thank you. And then there's uh, Big Frogums, greatly appreciated. Bailey Snyder, did I just do this one? I don't know. I always get lost right about this point. Thumbs up and thank you so much. Asef Actor, thumbs up and thank you. And Sean557, greatly appreciated. Each and every one of you, you get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with real people. Thank you very, very much. Going to be a shorter vlog today. I'm going to end it pretty much right here. I don't have... Well, I don't know if I'm going to have any sort of intro. Those usually add a good half hour to 45 minutes to my editing time to add those in. And I'm two hours and it takes, you know, an hour to edit and render without adding that stuff. So I don't know. Anyway, though, uh, if you could check out my various links, I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com, NearlySeniorCitizen.com. If you donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. If you wanted to donate, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that caught me by a surprise. If you wanted to donate or support me in some fashion but didn't want to use one of those two things, I do have a PayPal link down below. That would be awesome. And I have an Amazon wish list if you wanted to check that out. It's got cat food, hamster food, silly things, non-silly things. So if you wanted to check that out, that would be awesome. Now, please do not feel obligated. I don't feel entitled. And if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. If you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. Definitely a thumbs up. And if you can subscribe to the channel, that would be very cool. And make sure to hit that bell. That would be very cool. Greatly appreciated. I would understand if you did not wish to, but if you are down with it, I will do my very best to keep you entertained from now until the literal end of time, which will hopefully be a very long time from now. So I got this video, I got another video, I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I want to start recording off the consoles, just need to actually fire them up and do that. My problem is, I get fixated on stuff. I mean, I was fixated on playing Bloodborne. Last night was then the first time I turned on my consoles in almost two months. So, I, I don't know my own brain. I love games, I love consoles, I love doing stuff, and then I'll just suddenly stop using them for no good reason. That's where I put them, right over there, I was staring at them. So thumbs up. Anyway, uh, 18 minutes and 30, so you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, my friend, and that is a very good thing. And stay tuned, tomorrow's vlog, we're going to talk about who the hell knows. I got no ideas.